بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين ورحمة الله وبركاته Thank you for joining us for another episode of Tears from the Pulpit With me today I have four special guests His Eminence Sayyid Mahdi Al-Mudarrisi and his younger brother Sayyid Muhammad Kazim Al-Mudarrisi who we know from seeing him from the best of stories and with me as usual Mulla Ali Fadl and the poet Nuri Sardar Assalamu alaikum to you all wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Thank you all for coming at such a late time for this live show Pleasure Insha'Allah, our reward is from the person who we are about to speak about, Fatima Al-Alila, Salamullahi Alayha. Today's topic is about Fatima Al-Alila, and usually the pulpit, the member or the speaker, speaks about Fatima Al-Alila in a night like this. And for this reason, insha'Allah, we will remember her tonight. Abi Abdullah Al Hussein reached Karbala tonight or maybe the night before and he left Fatima Al Alila in Medina. So inshallah we will remember Fatima Al Alila with a few words of poetry and masaib from yourselves inshallah. Sayyidna we'll start with yourself. Abi Abdullah Al Hussein alayhi salam named all his sons Ali and all his daughters Fatima. There was a reason for this. And inshallah you can give us a brief intro about this. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. First of all, it's an honor to be among fellow servants of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. It certainly is a pleasure to be with you and I hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and reward us and strengthen us in our resolve to continue to serve the cause of Imam Hussein uh, in which there is great honor in this world as well as the hereafter inshallah. Um, Imam al Hussein's character was centered around defiance and resistance to that which is evil. And he portrayed that sense of defiance and resistance in all of the spheres of his life, including the names that he chose for his children. As you know, at that time, there was a state-sponsored systematic campaign of character assassination against the successor of the Messenger of God, the closest confidant of the Prophet Muhammad, Imam Ali salam, by his adversaries, by his enemies, by his foes, namely Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan. And one of the things that Muawiyah did was that he said that if there is any mention of Ali ibn Abi Talib being made by anybody in the entire kingdom, فَحْذِفُوهُ مِنَ الدِّوَانِ You should remove that person's name from the list of state welfare beneficiaries. So the Islamic government, which was entrusted with offering help and assistance to those who are poor, if you were, if you were found to ever mention, to ever utter the name of Ali ibn Abi Talib, that was a crime punishable by having your name erased from the government's books and even being persecuted, possibly imprisoned and even killed. And so one day a person encounters Hajjaj ibn Yusuf al-Thaqafi. Hajjaj ibn Yusuf al-Thaqafi was a tyrant by all measures. Umar ibn Abd al-Aziz al-Amawi, who was also a tyrant, a member of the Umayyad dynasty, cursed by the angels of the heavens as well as people on earth as, and the Imams, he says that on the day of judgment, if all the nations of the world bring their most oppressive tyrants to face judgment, and we come with no one but Hajjaj ibn Yusuf al-Thaqafi, we will beat them all. And so he recognizes just how evil this person was. Hajjaj encounters this individual. <coughs> he says to him, what's your name? The man is so fearful of the wrath of Hajjaj because he was named Ali. And so he responds almost as though he's ashamed. 
and says, ظلماني, My parents oppressed me. He said, why? He said, they gave me a bad name. He said, what's that name? He said, they named me Ali. Hajjaj says to him, yes, they did indeed oppress you by giving you that name. And so Imam Al-Hussein, as you correctly mentioned, he named every single one of his sons Ali. Or at least they were named Ali, but they also acquired nicknames with which they could be dis uh, distinguished from one another. And he named each and every one of his daughters Fatima, but they also had their nicknames. Fatima al Alila was, according to some historians, one of three daughters of Imam al Hussein. All of them named Fatima, and she was the middle. The youngest is Ruqayya. The eldest is Fatima al Kubra, both of whom were in Karbala and both of whom were taken as captives after the massacre of Aba Abdullah al Hussein. Fatima al Alila was the only one who remained back in Medina and was not able to join her father and her family in their journey. She's called Al Alila because she was ill. And so her plight is a special one. Not just because she's one of three daughters of Imam al Hussein. But because as hard as it was to face the atrocities of the day of Ashura, as difficult and painful as it was for Fatima al-Kubra and Ruqayyah to witness the macabre massacre of her father, of their father, their brothers, their siblings, their uncles, there is a special sense of bitterness in the hearts of the one who was never able to say goodbye to her father on the day of Ashura. And so we commemorate her and dedicate a special night to her often because of that sense of bitterness that remained in her heart all the way until she died. Um, Sayyidi Muhammad Kadhim, from what I believe, um, you have some uh, quotes from uh, a book written by Ayatollah Sayyid Hadi Al-Mudarrisi. The book is called Salutation. And it was written in Arabic and has now been translated into English. The book is called Salutation for the people that maybe want to maybe search on the internet or go and buy it. Uh, Sayyid Muhammad, if you would like to read us a yes. quote or two from the book. Yes, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim <coughs> We're in love with the truth, so we adore Hussein. We admire loyalty. So we esteem Abbas. We honor bravery. So we hail Ali al Akbar. We are captivated by perseverance. So we revere Habib. We are enchanted by repentance. So we honor Horror. We applaud patience. So we salute Zainab. Can you blame us? Can you blame us for loving the personifications of the most noble virtues? Hassan Sayyid, Muhammad Kabul. As I mentioned, I advise the brothers and sisters watching from home. The book is called Salutation, written by Ayatollah Sayyid Hadi Al Mudarrisi, inshallah. I can get a copy of that book myself as well. Um, with me as well is the poet Nuri Sardar. Um, Nuri, if you can um, read us a poem about Fatima al-Alila. I know you have one ready for us. This is a, a very old poem, one of my first poems. Uh, so it's not, I wouldn't say it's as deep as my current poems. It doesn't, I don't think it, go, it goes as deep as my current poems, but I have a special love for it because this poem in particular took me six months to write. Uh, this poem is called You Take All the Children and Mullah Ali Fadl read it in his album. And a lot of people have loved it when it goes alongside the tune. Uh, what, I, what I wanted to do is I wanted to write the perfect poem about how Fatima Alila feels about her father leaving her. I'm not sure, I wouldn't say that it, it, it is perfect, but what I would do is I would write one verse, wait a month until the emotion come, and the feeling comes back, and then continue the poem. In this poem I say, you take all the children, you take all the women. You take all the children, you take all the women, so why did you leave me and leave my heart broken? You leave me alone here, you leave me with my tears and leave my heart broken. I wake up to find you have left 
O oh, Father, my tears drip down and they flow like a river. Please come back. I ask you by our Creator, I have never been away from you ever. I miss your scent and kiss, O oh, son of Haydar. I miss your scent and kiss, O oh, son of Haydar, and my name is the sweet name of your mother. You've given me this name, and you I do not blame. Your mother, she loved you, and my love is the same, your words I want to hear, you leave me with my tears and leave my heart broken. I stand and wait at my door for your return. You left me but took all the other children. I stand and wait at my door for your return. You left me but took all the other children. With every passing day, I feel my heart burn. I long to kiss you. Your warmth is what I yearn. You are my rose, my flower. And my vision, without Hussein, to who am I left to turn? I'm surrounded by night. I'm surrounded by night. Father, you are my light. I live in a shadow without hearing or sight. I long to hold you near. You leave me with my tears and leave my heart broken. He tells me, he tells me, oh my rose, why are your eyes wet? My father tells me, oh my rose, why are your eyes wet? I tell him, your absence, my father. My heart can't accept my father every night at your side. I've slept. I've never met anyone like you. I've met your hand in my hand, your hand in my hand. Always I would have kept every day I was apart from you. I wept. He tells me, oh, young one, this is God's decision that you must be left here and live life an orphan. I tell him I can't bear you. Leave me with my tears and leave my heart broken. I ask him by Zahra, why would you leave me? I ask him, by Zahra, why would you leave me since my birth? Every day you've been near me. He tells me, oh my star, death approaches me. You remind me of my mother. It hurts me. But I tell him, I don't care if death takes me. I don't care if death takes me. Let me die beside you, Father, please let me. Let me die beside you, Father, please let me. With you and your body, please let me be buried. Together we will die. This will make me happy. My loneliness I fear. You leave me with my tears and leave my heart broken. You took with you my brothers, sisters and all. You took with you my brothers, sisters and all. I wish the skies both day and night on me fall. Your mother, she cried out between the door. And the wall, your mother, she cried out between the door and the wall. My father, I cry out to you the same call. I cry when shimmer over your neck stands tall. I cry when shimmer over your neck stands tall. I shed tears when Zainab cries in Yazid's hall. I cry when the arrows make my father's blood flow. They take Hussein away. And leave me with his shadow. Your shadow I hold dear. You leave me with my tears. And leave my heart broken. And leave my heart broken. Um, we have three or four minutes before we go for a short break. Um, Sayyidina, before we'll go into the Masa'ab, inshallah, and the second part of this show. But we have a lot of Masa'ab. I mean, Fatima al-Alila is just one child that we remember during... Um, these 10 days but a lot of tragedies happen we have <coughs> awlad muslim ibn aqil we have hamida the daughter of muslim these children they suffered a lot so a question arises why did the imam maybe take them there and if you can touch on one or two of these masaib of the children some historians have put the number of the children who were killed on the day of Ashura. Now we're not talking about the adults, we're not talking about the men or the women. Just the children who were either killed through the thirst, starvation, uh, or being trampled under the hooves of the horses at a staggering 17. 17 beautiful, innocent, little boys and girls that were either Imam Hussein's own children or the orphans of his brothers and perhaps his companions. And as you said, the tragedy of Karbala, the tragedy of Imam Hussein is so big 
It can never be encompassed in ten nights. It can't be encompassed in a hundred nights, let alone ten nights. We have maraja who have emphasized over and over again that the amount of information that we have received to highlight the, 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 the pains and sufferings and the passions of Imam Hussein on the day of Ashura, they do not represent even 1% of what actually transpired on that day. I have statements by Maraja saying that some people talk about exaggerating the tragedy of Imam Hussein. But the peak of tragedy can never be exaggerated. You cannot possibly go higher than what actually took place on the day of Ashura. You mentioned Hamida, the daughter of Muslim, for instance. Hamida's story, everybody's familiar with it. But what's really painful is the fact that when news of her father's martyrdom reaches Imam Hussein, the Imam then goes into the camp, he searches for this little girl of the closest confidant of Imam Hussein. Akhi wa ibn Ammi, the Imam calls him my brother and my cousin. He searches for her when he locates Hamida. He takes her in her lap. Historians say that he began kissing her and wiping his hand over her head. And it's at that moment that she realizes there is something that is befalling her father. And she remembers that this is the way the Ahlul Bayt would always treat orphans by wiping their hands over their heads. And so she looks up and she says to her uncle, uncle, has something befallen my father? Has something happened to him? And the Imam cannot break the news to this little orphaned girl. And so he says, The most painful thing about her is that she was also killed on the day of Ashura. And that's something that many people don't mention from the pulpits. We hear about this plight, this, this episode from her life. But the fact that she eventually, after all of this, all of the pains and sufferings, she herself was also killed. And so there is no way you can encompass all of these tragedies. What we do is really take snapshots from the tragedy of Abu Abdullah al Hussein. We take, you know, s tiny little samples of what the Imam went through and try our best through poetry, as we have seen, through eulogies and recitations, through lectures through all kinds of different mediums to try and make it more understandable, make it more comprehensible to people that have come 14 centuries later trying to grasp just how grave the tragedy really was. Thank you, Sayyidina. Join us after the break where we will see more or speak about more tragedies of the day of Ashura. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you for joining us for the show Tears from the Pulpit. As I mentioned with me, I have His Eminence Sayyid Mahdi Al Mudarrasi, Sayyid Muhammad Kazim Al Mudarrasi, Mulla Ali Fadl, and the poet Nuri Sardar. I'll move to Mulla Ali Fadl, who I believe has a Natmiya ready for us, Ko Fatima Al Alila. Assalamu alaikum. Salaam alaikum to our respected viewers as well. Uh, the poet, as again, is uh, Nuri Sadar for this poem. Um, it is a poem where Fatima Alila speaks with her dreams, where she speaks in a way that she doesn't want to fall asleep because she knows that she knows that Imam Al Hussein might appear in this dream, and of course, the discussion happens where Imam Al Hussein speaks to Fatima Alila through her dreams. Father, every night I'm scared to fall asleep because I know, <coughs> because I know when I wake up I shall weep. Every night in my dreams, my father, I meet his severed head 
Honey, spare I'm forced to greet. I'm always having arguments with this dream. I say, oh, dream with you, nothing's as it seems. So do not show me the head of my Hussein. I know he's safe, and to my side he'll return. I know he's safe, and to my side he'll return. I say, oh dream, to not give me this answer. This child cannot bear to lose her father. The dream tells me he returns to his mother and left you alone, O oh child, to cry rivers and left you alone, O oh child, to cry rivers. Then the dream showed me more than just my father. It showed me a bus lying by the river. Then the dream showed me more than just my father. It showed me a bus lying by the river. My heart could not bear to witness picture. My heart could not bear to witness this picture by my uncle's body laid his hand severed by my body by my uncle's body laid his hand severed in my dream I fall on the head of Hussein in my dream I fall on the head of Hussein I cry oh father you left but I remain you reunite with Zahra at heaven's gate whilst in my hands I hold your head oh Hussein whilst in my hands I hold your head oh Hussein Sayyid Muhammad Kadhim you have another verse from that book for us, the book is called Salutation by Ayatollah Sayyid Hadi Al Mudarrasi. Yes, inshallah. <clears throat> Hussein is a call to the truth and a standard of truth and a plan for truth and a sword of truth and a lighthouse of truth and a martyr of truth. Hussein is by all means and merits the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. History has witnessed many heroic acts, but it has never seen such faith as that of Hussein in his martyrdom, nor such courage as that of Hussein in his blitz. 
nor such valor as that of Hussein in his combat. Verily, the master of martyrs stood out in every single one of his qualities. One of the many lessons of Imam Hussein's revolution is that he who does not fear death, there is not a force in the universe that can subdue or defeat him. Mm -hmm. Hassan so, Sayyidina, uh, where can we get a hold of this book? Maybe the viewers are going to send an email, so let's just answer them before they do. Well, actually, the book is not published yet. Uh, the reason for that is because we translated 72 uh, of these quotes from the book, but then the book was expanded. And so now it's reached up to, I think, 550 quotes. 520. So 520, and so we can't really keep up with uh, the pace of, uh, of my father and, and how uh, he's expanded on the original book. But inshallah, what we might be able to do is release the book uh, in, um, uh, uh, in PDF format mm. and distribute it to, um, to our viewers or wh whoever wishes to get a copy, inshallah. Coming back to our subject, Sayyidina, and... Um, as the show is called Tears from the Pulpit, what does the pulpit have to say about Fatima al-Alila? And on a night like this, what narrations do we hear from the pulpit about Imam al Hussein leaving this young daughter of his? And from what we hear is she begged her father to go with him to Karbala. No doubt. No doubt one of the most difficult things Imam al Hussein did when he left the city of his grandfather, the city of Medina, we all know that the Ahlul Bayt, each and every single member of this holy household had a special connection to the city of Medina. It is after all the city of their grandfather where he is buried. It is the city where their mother is buried though her grave is concealed. It's the city of the Ahlul Bayt. And so it was always very difficult for the members of the Holy Household to say goodbye. Despite that, they were forced into exile many, many times. And almost every member of the Ahlul Bayt was forced out of the city of Medina at some stage in their life. And as far as I've seen, Every time one of them was forced to leave the city, one of the last things they did was to go into the mausoleum of the Prophet, mm -hmm. into the sacred mosque of the Messenger of God, to bid him farewell. Mm -hmm. Imam al Hussein, as we all know, is given an ultimatum. He is threatened that he either submits to the <coughs> reign of Yazid ibn Muawiyah this tyrannical, oppressive tyrant, this immoral, vicious excuse for a human being, or he'd be killed. The Imam refuses to offer his allegiance. And he says, Let's wait until the morning and we'll see. He wanted to avoid bloodshed. He wanted to avoid getting into a physical confrontation with the people inside the holy city of Medina. The Imam had a plan worked out as to how he wanted this journey to culminate in Karbala. And so he avoided bloodshed in Medina, he avoided bloodshed in Mecca, Mecca. and he proceeded towards his ultimate resting place in Karbala. Historians tell us before I move on to Fatima al Halila that Imam al Hussein on that night. He went to the mausoleum of Rasulullah. He stood in front of the cage holding the grave of the messenger. And he addressed him by saying, As-salamu alayka ya jaddah ya Rasulullah. Hadha al-Husayn ibn Fatima Farkhuka wa ibn Farkhatik O messenger of God this is Hussein. This is your sweetheart. This is your beloved grandson. This is the one you used to carry on your shoulders and on your back. 
I am the son of your daughter, I am the fruit of your heart. Ya Rasul Allah, wa qad jara alayya ma ta'lam. And, has bef- and there are things that have befallen me that you are aware of. Look at how they've treated me. Subhanallah. Traditions tell us that one day the Messenger of God entered into his mosque. There was no distance between the Prophet's house and his mosque. It was just a door. Imagine the companions are sitting down. They're all waiting for the Messenger to come to lead them in prayer, to lead them in discussion, to offer them words of wisdom, revelations from God. Historians say that the Prophet came in sobbing, not just crying, not weeping, but sobbing. وَكَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ يَبْكِي Imagine you're one of the companions of this messenger and you see a grown man shedding tears, rolling down his cheeks. Ya Rasulullah, what's wrong? Has something happened? Has someone dear to you just died? The messenger said, No, but I just received the messenger of my Lord, the archangel Jibra'il. He came to me. He said, As-salamu yuqri'uka as-salamu ya Rasulullah, O messenger of God. The peace conveys his peace, and he asks you, Do you love this young child? <laughs> Referring to Imam al Hussein, Rasulullah responded like any man would, Bala ya Jibra'il. By God, I love him. He is the fruit of my life. He is my flesh and my blood and my soul. Husaynun minni wa ana min Husayn. Ahab Allah man ahab Husayna. He would say, Husayn is from me and I am from Husayn. God loves anyone who loves Hussein. Yes, I love him, O oh, Jibra'il. Do you have something to say? Do you have any news to deliver? Jibra'il said, Ya Rasul Allah, I have tragic news for you. فَإِنَّ أُمَّتَكَ هَذِهِ سَتَقْتُلُهُ وَتَذْبَحُهُ عَطْشَانًا غَرِيبًا وَحِيدًا فَرِيدًا Your own nation will ultimately sever his head while he is thirsty and he is asking for water to quench his thirst. The tragedy of the thirst of Aba Abdullah al Hussein is so great and I don't want to get into this but suffice to say that on the day of Ashura when they came to sever his sacred head the Imam looked up one last time and he said جدي رسول الله أنا عطشان by the, by the name of my grandfather I am thirsty and yet they refused to offer for him a drop of water. Rasulullah begins to cry. All the companions start crying. And so on this night, Imam al Hussein introduces himself once again to his grandfather. Ya Rasul Allah, dhummani ilayk. Take me with you, O Messenger of God. O Grandfather, I do not wish to go back into this cruel world. Historians say that the Imam fell asleep when it was near dawn. Then he woke up crying at first and then smiling. He went to his household, he went to his family. What has happened, O Father? Ya Aba Abdullah. He said, when I fell asleep, I suddenly saw the Messenger of God approach me. I said to him, O Messenger, I do not wish to go back. The world is a cruel place. 
They have oppressed us. They have killed my mother between the wall and the door. They killed my father and they dyed his white beard with the blood of his head. They poisoned my brother Hassan, leaving him throw up chunks of his liver. Oh, grandfather, I do not want to go back. There is a Bahraini poet. May Allah bless his soul. And Bahrainis are known for their love for Aba Abdullah al Hussein. And now, for the first time in many years, they are living a small sample of the tragedies of Aba Abdullah in Bahrain. We have people imprisoned in Bahrain. Just today, we received news. Ulama, scholars, speakers, and servants of Aba Abdullah who have been prevented from commemorating Aba Abdullah in those dark prison cells. They are true lovers of the Imam. One of them is a man by the name of Al-Hasan al-Dimistani from a village in Bahrain called Al-Dimistan. He says in these poetic verses, he said, ضمني عندك يا جدا في هذا الضريح He is speaking about the moment where Imam Al-Hussein converses with his grandfather. لست أنساه طريدا عن جوار المصطفى I shall never forget him being forced out of the proximity of his grandfather's city. لا إذن بالقبة النوراء يشكو أسفا قائلا يا جاد رسم الصبر من قلبي عفا O grandfather, I do not have any more patience. I cannot take this anymore. ببلاء أنقذ الظهر وأوه المنكب صبت الدنيا علينا حاصبا من شرها لم لم لذق فيها هنيئا بلغة من برها ها أنا مطرود رجس هائم في برها تاركا بالرغم مني دار سكن الوالدين I am leaving but I am forced to leave يا رسول الله then he says ضمني عندك يا جدا في هذا الضريح O grandfather embrace me with you in this shrine علني يا جد من بلوى زماني أستريح so that maybe I am relieved from the pains and tribulations of my time. The world has become dark, the world is cramped, and I cannot take this pain anymore. Suddenly, he says there was a call from within the shrine of Rasulullah. فَعَلَى مِنْ دَاخِلِ الْقَابْرِ نِدَاءٌ وَعَوِيلٌ There was a cry from the grave, O oh, Hussein, you cannot join me as of yet. There is a position held for you that you can only attain if, you, if your blood is shed on the plains of Karbala. Imam al Hussein then goes to bid his family farewell. And the last person he says goodbye to is Fatima al Alila al Wusta. Now imagine Fatima al Alila is already ill. She's already overtaken by the pain of the sickness. How could a father come to his daughter and tell her that he is leaving never to return? How could Aba Abdullah al Hussein break the news to this little girl that you shall soon be orphaned, O oh Fatima? The Imam comes to her. We do not know the intricacies of the conversation. We could only imagine Aba Abdullah sitting next to her bed. She was asleep. The Imam did not wish to wake her up. So he simply sits there and begins to cry. Suddenly she wakes up. She looks at her father's face. She notices that Aba Abdullah is crying. Imagine a little girl 
seeing her father crying for no reason, she says to him, Oh father, Abba, are you here to cry because I'm about to die? Because I will no longer be able to live and see you as I grow older. The imam says, No, my daughter, Fatima, that is not why I cry. She says to him, Ya Abba, then why are you crying? The imam says, Ya Fatima, ay bunayya, lisanu haliha. This is what we imagine the imam saying to his daughter as he bids her farewell. I am about to leave. I am going away on a journey that is going to last a long time. Fatima Alila is heartbroken. She says to him, Abba, why can't you stay? He says, No, Allah, an yarani qatila. My God wishes to see me die for this cause. After realizing she cannot dissuade her father, what does she say? She says, Oh Father, then will you leave with me my brother Ali al Akbar? Aba Abdullah al Hussein cries further and he says, No, Ali al Akbar is my special sacrifice. Ali al Akbar is the first person I shall send to the battlefield. He is my son. He is the one that resembles Rasulullah khalqan wa khulqan. He must also come with me. She says, Abba, then if you must leave, and so does my brother Ali al Akbar, then will my uncle Abbas stay back to take care of me? I don't want to be orphaned and have no one taking care of me. He says, but Abbas is my standard bearer. Abbas is the one who carries my flag. Abbas has to come along with me. She says, then, oh father, Ali al Akbar goes. Abbas goes. You are going. Then surely my young brother, Ali al Asghar, is staying back. Abba Abdullah this time cries even louder. He says, no, my daughter, Ali al Asghar, is the tiny bud, the unopened flower that I shall crown my bundle with. Ali al Asghar is the last arrow that I will use against my enemy. Ali al Asghar will be my last sacrifice before Allah. أنه بعين الله لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وسيعلم الذين ظلموا أي منقلب ينقلبون والعاقبة للمتقين Insha'Allah will be held in a cup for us and Insha'Allah will be waiting for us. These tears are the reason we remember Imam al Hussein and we ask Imam al Hussein for his ziyara as soon as possible and for his shafa'a in the afterlife. I thank you all for joining me at such a late time. I pray that this show not only is for the channel but also will be written for you in the hereafter for Fatima al Zahra alayhi salam. I ask the viewers to pray for us, pray for Ahl Bayt TV to keep the message of Abi Abdullah al Hussein Ruhi lahu al Fida alive. Inshallah, you will join me tomorrow for another show of Tears from the Pulpit. Ya Rabb al Hussein, Bihaq al Hussein, Ishfi Sadr al Hussein. بظهور الحجة والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته